Hello and welcome back to Otako Recap. Today we are talking about an anime series called Elfin Lied. The series was released in 2004 and its intense and thrilling plot is something worthy of experiencing. Be aware of spoilers and let's just jump right into it. Episode 1, A Chance Encounter. In a remote location, there is an experimental laboratory. It's a secret location. Its main purpose is to hold Diclonius and experiment on these beings. One day, one of the Diclonius's escapes the lab. Her name is Lucy. During her escape, she has to fight the lab security, and she kills a lot of them. Unfortunately, before she can fully leave the facility, she is shot in the head and she falls into the ocean below. The damage from the bullet causes her to lose most of her memories and splits her personality. This new personality, called New, is more kind, childlike, and innocent in her behavior. Two cousins, Yuka and Kota, find the Diclonius. The cousins have been apart for almost a decade and now have been reunited and this is the first thing that happens to them. They take Lucy home with them, but their life together doesn't last for long. Lucy accidentally breaks Kota's seashell, which was a token from his late sister. Kota gets emotional and angry. Lucy is scared away. She has no memory whatsoever and she runs again. Episode 2 Annihilation the secret lab that is doing all the experiments is led by a scientist named Kurama. He is worried about losing such an important test subject, so he sends a special task force after Lucy. The task force is led by a cruel assassin called Bando. The task force takes their time, but eventually they find Lucy on a beach. She is in her childlike state, the new. Bando takes the opportunity to capture her and hits her. Unfortunately for Bando, the hit doesn't knock out New, but reverts her back to her other personality, Lucy. She kills Bando's partner and then goes after him. She shoots him, blinds and dismembers him, but right before fully killing him, Lucy reverts to her new state. It seems that depending on the situation, her personalities switch, especially if she is threatened. Kota, who was injured by Bando, recovers. Kota and Yuko Keep looking after Lucy. He forgives her for destroying the seashell. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Lucy is special in more ways than one. She is the only non-sterile Diclonius, which means she can infect someone if they are touched by her vectors. For Bando to keep going after her, the lab needs to castrate him for that exact reason. If she touched him, all his children would be Diclonius. Episode 3 Deep Feelings we see that Yuka, Kota, and Yu now live together. They all try to get along, but Yuka is starting to become jealous of Yu and Kota. Yuka has loved Kota since they were just kids, and seeing him spend time with Yu makes her go crazy. Kota is trying his best to take care of Yu, even helping her change her clothes. A curious young girl called Mayu witnessed the entire event on the beach and what Lucy did. She returns an umbrella Kota forgot on the beach. They try to investigate just how much this girl knows. Elsewhere in the facility, Kirama is preparing a special plan to get Lucy back. Another test subject Diclonius, called Nana, is being prepared to go out there and track down Lucy and bring her back to the laboratory by any means necessary. Episode 4, Attack. Nana is let loose in the wild to find Lucy, and seemingly she also has special abilities. She can use telepathy on her species to track down Lucy. It takes some time, but she finds Lucy in a small, run-down cemetery. The two of them immediately start to fight. The little girl Mayu from before again is in the wrong place and witnesses the fight between the two Diclonae. In the battle, Lucy overpowers Nana, ripping most of her limbs and wounding her badly. Nana manages to block Lucy's powers of vectors, even if it's just for a short while. At that point, Kirama gets frustrated, as Nana has failed. His superior, Kakuzawa, orders him to eliminate Nana, as she no longer has any purpose and is a failed product. Yuka realizes that Mayu is actually homeless, so they offer her to stay with the three of them in their house. Episode 5 Receipt Mayu gladly spends the night, but leaves in the morning. We see what brought her living on the street. She had a horrible home life with her mom being cold towards her and even angry. Mayu was also abused by her father, and that made her mother even more angry and jealous of her. 
Eventually, the little girl decided to escape her horrible home and ran away, and she met a cute stray dog on her journey. Yuka and Koda decide that they want to help her, and not just for one night. They arrange to be her guardians, which her mother gladly accepts. After a while, Yuka and Koda return to their daily activity and classes at their university, but luck is not on their side, as it is revealed that one of the professors is actually the son of Kakuzawa, who is Kurama's boss. Because Yuka and Kota showed up with Lucy, he is able to recognize her. He claims Lucy is his brother's daughter and that he is glad to see her family found. He takes Lucy away from the cousins. When he is alone with Lucy, he reveals he is also part of Diconius, and his plan is for him and Lucy to mate and erase the human species. Lucy has other plans. She activates her vector powers and decapitates him without mercy. Episode 6 Innermost Feelings in the faculty, Bando is being prepared to be castrated. He is angry and panicked and decides to escape before they can finish the process. He is solely focused on his revenge against Lucy. The next day, the university staff and Kota find the body of Kakuzawa. He has been decapitated and everybody is shocked. Mayu, on her way to school, runs into Bando. They previously met on the beach where she helped him, so he feels he owns her. That all changes when he realizes she knows the location of Lucy. He gets angry and yells at her. Kota and Yuka are in search for Lucy, as she has been missing since the incident at the university. While on the search, their relationship evolves, and they kiss. After a while, they do find Lucy and take her home with them. Lucy seems to remember knowing both of them when they were just kids. When Kurama was ordered to eliminate Nana, he goes against those orders, and gives her new mechanical limbs and money. Then he releases her to be free. Unfortunately, almost immediately after being set free, Nana runs into an angry Bando who thinks she is Lucy. Episode 7 Confrontation The two begin a battle, with Bando shooting Nana and her dodging. Bando uses special heavy bullets that eventually harm Nana. She is confused and wants to listen to the advice Kurama gave her to not harm anyone, and Bando takes this as an opportunity to shoot her once again. The gun's recoil destroys Bando's new mechanical arm. Both of them realize that they have been injured and harmed in some way by Lucy, so they agree to join forces. Kakuzawa is furious at Kurama and his staff for letting Nana go and still not being able to bring back Lucy. Nana is confused and lost. She runs into Mayu at the same cemetery where they had become friends. Mayu brings her back home, and that's where Nana once again runs into Lucy and attacks her. Episode 8 The Beginning Lucy is in her new state, so Nana knocks her out with ease. Everyone in the home yells at Nana as she escapes. Later, she meets with Mayu once again and tries to explain what Lucy truly is and her powers. Meanwhile, the assistant of the late Professor Kakuzawa is forced to work with the facility. At that moment, it is revealed that the chairman also wants Lucy to build a new species on Earth, a new subject. Number 35 is sent to kill both Nana and bring back Lucy. Lucy, while recovering, remembers an orphanage where she was bullied by everyone, even the staff. That is where she first started to hate humans. When her classmates killed a small dog she befriended, Lucy lost control and killed all of them with her vectors. Episode 9 Reminiscence In the past, after she killed her schoolmates and destroyed the orphanage, Lucy runs into Quota when he was a child. Together they go to the zoo and spend an entire day having fun like two normal kids. They play in the water and look at the beautiful animals. After the day is over, Lucy is grateful and says that this was the greatest day of her life. She starts to change her mind about humanity as a whole. She slowly starts to fall in love with Kota, but when Yuka shows up, Lucy feels disappointed. This brings her back to her path of death and destruction. Episode 10 Infant we see more of Kurama's life and how he ended up working for the lab. He was friends with Kazukawa, and he was invited to work on the special Diconius project right after university. While performing experiments on the test subjects, 
he is infected with the Diclonius virus, and because of that, his daughter, Mariko, is born as a Diclonius. Kirama plans to kill her, but his wife, before she dies from complications with the birth, makes him spare her. Meanwhile, Lucy is revealed as the original Diclonius, a queen of her kind, and she infected all the other humans with her vectors. We see that the laboratory is sending number 35, who is the most deadly of all the test subjects, after Lucy and Nana. Episode 11 Complication The identity of number 35 subject is revealed that it is Mariko, Kirama's daughter. She has grown into a monster Diconius, and any human who gets near her is killed almost immediately. She has 26 vectors and an insane range of attacks. The entire staff carefully sets her free to go after Lucy. She is the last resort and the most desperate attempt. As soon as they let her go, she starts killing them, but a bomb is used to get her under control. Nana senses that Mariko is coming, so she meets her in battle. Bando and Kirama have secretly formed a plan together to kill Lucy without informing anyone from the facility. Episode 12 Quagmire Koda has been having trouble remembering his past for some time, but now everything comes flooding back to him. He remembers that after Lucy felt betrayed by him, lying about his cousin, she killed his father and little sister. Kirama hires Bando once again to kill both Lucy and Mariko. Kirama wants his daughter to be destroyed once and for all. Mariko has Nana, as well as Lucy, almost killed, but Nana uses her vectors to deactivate Mariko's powers and both of them fall off the bridge. Bando arrives at the scene in search of Mariko, as Kirama ordered, but when he sees Lucy, he immediately goes after her, thinking he is finally going to get his revenge. Episode 13 No Return After a recovery period, Mariko has her vector powers back again, and she wants to confront Lucy one last time. In their battle, she takes one of Lucy's horns, which sends her in a state of shock. Kirama, who saved Nana after she fell off the bridge, is there watching the battle unfold. Mariko, for the first time, senses something strange and realizes that Kirama is her father, the one who didn't care for her. Now she is seeing him standing there with Nana. Kirama goes to his daughter Mariko one last time, reassuring her that everything is going to be okay. Then the bomb that has been inside Mariko is detonated and both of them are destroyed. It is revealed that the director of the whole facility and the architect of all the experiments is also a Diclonius. Lucy apologizes to Kota for her actions, and they kiss before she leaves to fight off the security team. There are shots fired, and destruction is heard. After a while, Kota, Mayu, Yuka, and Nana all settle down, living together in peace. Just as they are getting ready to eat together, someone appears at the door. Kota goes to check it out, and he sees a silhouette standing at the door. A silhouette that strongly resembles Lucy. The End And that brings a close to this adventure and the video for today. We hope you enjoyed experiencing this exciting and sometimes scary story with us. Please leave a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye!